there, everybody. Peter of England here, talking to you today about a very interesting topic, fraud. Now, the first thing to understand about fraud is the nature of what it purports to do. And it's a system of trickery, and it's a system of non-revelation, it's a system of non-disclosure and non-transparency. In effect, it's trickery. The first thing we'd like to address, though, before we get onto this subject here is that money has never ever paid for anything on this planet. It never has and it never will. The only thing that can pay for goods and services are other goods and services. The next part of this fraud is most people say, can you pay us in cash? Yeah. What they mean by that is legal tender. It's a very, very narrow range of, uh, of money and it's typically cash and coin, which is typically what's called MO or M1 money, when the Bank of England refers to it. Now, here's the thing. If you actually pick up a five pound note now, and for those who are a little bit more wealthy, while any of you have still got any money in your pocket, you can pick up a 10 pound note or a 20 pound note and you can see what it says. It says, I promise to pay the bearer on demand the sum of whatever. Now, what was that sum that used to be payable? Up until 1931, when you were all taken and stripped off the gold standard, it used to be payable in gold. So you would turn up to the bank, or the Bank of England, and they would pay you the amount in gold that you actually had as your promissory note. However, these days what happens is when you go to the checkout at Morrison's or Tesco or Sainsbury's or Marks and Spencer's, you hand over to the cashier, what? A note, a promise. Now a promise to pay must by definition infer that you can't actually pay at the moment. Otherwise, you would actually pay. Does anybody apart from me see the logic in that? It's a promise to pay. But once you've taken your goods out of the store and gone home, when do you ever return to commit to the promise? When do you ever go back and deliver the money? So what's happened is the trickery, the trickery that Kenneth Galbraith says, the way that money is produced is so simple that it actually restricts the mind, it confuses the mind, is by that nature. It is so simple that it's deceiving a child with a, a closed fist. So these are the facts now. So when the banking community come along and point a finger, we'd like to try and outline for you out there now these things called the five fraudulent facts of finance, which some of you may be aware of. Now, let's look at it from the part of view of someone coming along to take a loan or to take a mortgage. The first fraudulent fact is what's called fraudulent inducement. And that is where an individual is induced to make or participate in a contract when all the facts have not been mentioned to him. So typically I would read that the fraud in a loan or a mortgage, it's the fraud that the borrower commits by pledging as collateral property or performance which at the time of signing the agreement he does not own or even have title to. And that's what happens when you go in and pledge on a mortgage. You are making and they're encouraging you to enter and it's you that are committing the offence. You are engaged in what's called fraudulent inducement because you are pledging, let's say in the example of a mortgage, a property as collateral for a future liability but you don't own the property. How can you pledge that which you don't have? Fraudulent fact one. The second violation is what's called fraudulent concealment. And this is entered into by not only the banks, but in collusion there with the solicitor. This is all the solicitors, all the members of the legal profession out there, and the judges who are all in on the same deal. You're being hoodwinked. And best way to describe that is the failure of the bank or the loan company to disclose the true nature of the contract. The bank calls it a loan. Lending the bar leading the borrower to believe that she or she is actually receiving a loan of existing money. But as we can see, there is no existing money because they don't have to go into the vault to check how much they've got in the back room. They don't have to phone head office to find out how many other loans have been taken out that day. It matters not. And as the Bank of England has stipulated in their Q1 2014, um, the 
nature of money and how money is produced, what they state is in effect that the moment that the bank produces a loan, it simultaneously creates in the depositor account a amount of money. So this is the new money. You don't have to have money anymore to create money. All you have to do is dial some figures into a computer screen and it creates the loan liability. The next one is the fraud. The third one is what's called fraudulent misrepresentation. And the misrepresentation here is leading you to believe that you can actually pay this so-called debt off over time. And that's an illusion because there's something called principal that you borrow and then there's what's called principal plus interest. And as long as the principal plus interest is always higher than principal, then there will always be a determinable but not identifiable group of people within society that by the very nature of the mathematical equation must default, hence become bankrupt, therefore must endure a court procedure or repossession. So that's the fraud there on all of you. And the final one is probably the fraud of the biggest fraud of all against the planet and mother nature. All the natural resources, all the things that you've been encouraged to buy, the fraud there is that they're all free, they're all on the planet, and they all belong to us all. Yet, a simple, well-organized cartel, moneyed interests, over time, have cornered the market, are mining the ores, mining the resources, cutting the timber, exploiting the fuel, and they are then selling it to you. And so when we say here that who, who loses out here, ultimately the planet loses out, the sphere upon which you live and depend for your life is put at risk, and it's exploited for monetization and monetary gain. So when the banks or any other organization are pointing the fring fingers about fraud, first they must very sincerely get their own houses in order, and they know they can't. So that's a bit of an update on the fact and the allegation of what is fraud and what isn't fraud. And the one thing, we are bank, isn't fraud.